This is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeonstuff.com. Today we have a Samsung NP365 E5C with a cracked screen, and we're going to show you how to replace a cracked screen on a Samsung NP365 E5C laptop computer. Uh, we do, before we do anything with this laptop computer, we want to remove all sources of power and that includes removing the battery. In order to do that, we close the lid, flip the laptop over, slide the two levers outward and slide the battery out like so and put it on the side. While we're on the bottom, I'll show you where to find the model number for this laptop because it's not on the top. There's a barcode label that says NP365E5C and also at the top of the top right hand corner of the black label it says 365E. That's an alternative model name for this laptop computer. Okay, let's flip the laptop over and take a look. Before we start, we're going to show you the tools we're going to need for this job. We have a PH0 electronics screwdriver. PH stands for Phillips and zero is the size. We have a hobby knife or X-Acto knife with a pointed end and that's to remove screw covers and adhesive tape. And finally we have a pair of tweezers that's to manipulate cables and remove any screws that may be stuck. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, for this model, we have to remove the screen bezel. That's the plastic frame going around the screen. And before we move this, remove the screen bezel, we need to remove the screws securing the screen bezel to the screen assembly. And they're hiding behind some plastic covers. You see some rubber covers up on top, and usually there's screws hiding behind there, but in this case, there's no screws behind there, so leave those alone. But we do have to remove the plastic covers on the bottom to expose the screws, and that's what we'll start with. So we use our hobby knife, or X-Acto knife, to lift up the screw covers and put them right beside the screw opening, and same on the second side like so and the screws are exposed then we use our screwdriver to remove the two screws one and let's focus and two like so and what we want to do is put these screws to the side and for each set of screws, for each step, I like to keep them in a separate pile in the order in which we remove them. And that helps us keep track of which screws go where when we put the laptop back together. The next step is to snap the screen bezel open, snap it off the screen assembly. To do that, we put our fingertips or fingernails on the screen side and push up and outward and listen for snapping sounds. Once you hear snapping sounds, that's a good sign. And in this way, go around the screen assembly. This might take you a bit of time, depending how tight the connections are. But take your time, and if there's a spot that's too hard to do, skip that spot and come back to it later. Sometimes this happens on corners. Corners are hard to do. So do everything else and then come back later. It will be easier to do that. And same thing on the bottom. Just push upward and outward. Like so. And once we snap everything off, the screen bezel comes off like this. We put the screen bezel to the side. Next, we need to separate the screen from the screen assembly. Uh, for this type of screen, it's mounted on the side with some screws to the metal mounting brackets on the side. And we need to have access to these screws on the metal mounting brackets. So what we need to do next is to remove the two screws up on top that hold the metal, metal mounting brackets to the back of the screen assembly. And we do that one by one. 
make sure your screen is tilted back a little bit when you do that so that the screen doesn't fall forward on you when you remove all the screws. And two. Okay, once we do that, we can gently separate the screen and the metal mounting brackets from the back of the screen assembly and we see that two of the screws are exposed and it's still a bit hard to get to the bottom one. For this we have a trick. There's two screws that are holding the brackets to the back of the screen assembly. We don't want to remove them but we want to loosen them so we can tilt the screen forward a little bit. Maybe loosen them one or two turns on both sides like so. Once we do that, we have access to all three screws on each side. So next is we're going to remove the three screws, starting from the bottom one first. And once again, start a separate pile for this set of screws. One, two, and three. like so and the same on the other side one and once again make sure that the screen assembly is tilted back a little bit when you do that two and three okay once we did that, we saw the screen fall back a little bit. That means it's loose. When we try to tilt it forward, we see that the webcam cable is holding it back. So what we want to do is remove the webcam cable. It has some adhesive on the back that sticks to the screen. So we pinch it with our finger towards the screen assembly and just loosen up the adhesive. And now we can tilt the screen forward and we see that there's more adhesive here for the webcam cable. We gently lift it up and now we can tilt the screen forward. Alternatively you can remove the webcam connector from the webcam circuit board but I prefer not to do that so as not to disturb the connector but you can do it if you want. Just make sure you put it back in when putting everything back together. Okay, the next step is to remove this connector over here. It secures the the connector is secured by adhesive tape to the back of the screen. So what we want to do is lift up the adhesive tape and using our hobby knife to lift up a corner of it and then we use our fingertips to lift up the adhesive tape and then we lift up the back of it also. There's some adhesive tape on the back of the video cable. We want to free the video cable from the screen so we can disconnect the connector like so. Okay, once we do that, I pulled it out already, but let's put it back in. Once we do that, what we want to do is pull the connector out like so. Once you pull the connector out, the screen is loose. Let's take a look at this screen. This is a 15.6 inch LED screen and it is a very common screen so it's commonly available. Uh, what's not so common about this particular screen is the part number. The part number is HB156WX1. This is a part number that you do not see too often, but it is compatible with many part numbers out there. So when you do your search for the screen, just type in the part number, and most likely when you receive it, you receive a compatible part number. The other unusual thing about this screen, it has as it has a matte finish. Unless you specifically request a matte finish, most likely you will get a glossy finish because almost all of the screens for this size 
have a glossy finish. Uh, it doesn't really matter one way or the other, it's a personal preference. Okay, you can or also order this screen from us, from Screen Surgeons, and you will get a compatible part number that we guarantee you will work 100% with this laptop model, and you will also get a glossy finished, finished screen from us. Um, so what's when you order the screen from us, we include this exact same toolkit that I used with the screen with your order. If you're in the United States, we ship quickly using priority mail and the shipping is free so you'll get your screen in two or three days. We have a two year warranty and on all our screens and we have free email technical support. We also ship to most countries around the world so just follow the regular checkout procedure and specify your country. To order this screen from us, go to www.screensurgeons.com. There will be a small form for you to fill out and then that will guide you to order the right screen online. Okay, once you do get your screen in, connect it. Uh, let me show you how to reconnect it. Uh, the problem sometimes is the connector doesn't slide all the way back in. So what we need to do is when you slide it back in, you'll feel but not hear two clicks when the connector is engaging. And let's get a close-up look. Pause the video right here. This is a properly connected connector. There should not be a gap in the seam between the two sides of the connector and they should be flush with each other. Once you connect the screen, mount it in the screen assembly like before. Put the three screws in on each side. Tighten the two sets of two screws on each side. Make sure you don't forget this step because you'll damage your hinges if you don't tighten it. Put the two screws in at the top. Snap the screen bezel back on. Put the two screws in at the bottom and then to put the screw covers back on and that will be it. You'll be done. Okay, and um, once you do that, your laptop should be working again. Okay, that's it. Once again, my name is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much, and good luck.